GOP leaders and pollsters are in a full panic that the voters heading to the polls in November will disregard the strong economy and turn Republican lawmakers out because of the chaos. President Donald Trump continues to create with his Twitter account. According to the New York Times, tensions are rising between the White House and congressional Republicans over the upcoming midterms, with the White House blaming what is expected to be an Election Day bloodbath on GOP retirements and bad candidates, and Republicans' leaders pointing the finger at Trump. What infuriates the Republican leadership is their belief that they will be unable to run on a strong economy, news of which keeps getting buried by Trump's daily outbursts on Twitter. This is very much a referendum on the president, explained Rep. Tom Cole, ROK. If we had to fight this campaign on what we accomplished in Congress and on the state of the economy, I think we'd almost certainly keep our majority. According to Glenn Bolger, a top GOP pollster at work on several high-profile races, Trump is his biggest problem. People think the economy is doing well, but that's not what they're voting on, they're voting on the chaos of the guy in the White House, he told the Times, adding that he fully believes that Republicans will likely to lose the House, where up to 60 seats currently held by Republicans are being fiercely contested. According to the Times, Republican strategists say Mr. Trump is alienating a sizable block of moderate and Republican-leaning voters who favor right-of-center economic policies but recoil from the president. There's 15 percent of the electorate that's happy with the direction of the country but angry with the president, explained Corey Bliss, who runs the Congressional Leadership Fund. James Carville, the Democratic strategist who was behind Bill Clinton's It's the Economy, Stupid, push in 1992, said Trump will have no one but himself to blame if his party loses control of the House, and possibly the Senate, in November. He won't allow himself to get credit for the economy, Carville explained. He's made himself bigger than the economy. Every conversation starts and ends with Trump.